All right, my friends. So uh, today's video, I'm going to be answering a question on how to remove the uh, lens from the binocular housing or the lens housing. And I'm going to show you how to do this kind of thing because uh, during for the uh, the Z type binocular and the B type binocular. Okay. Now, the first thing we have to understand is that there are different systems for collimating binoculars or getting them aligned and one of the systems that affects the removing of the objective lens is the eccentric ring system if your binocular has this system i would tell you that if it's aligned but you want to get in there and maybe clean it up a little bit i would not touch it because you are going to most likely uh, misalign the binoculars and those eccentric ring system stuff is extremely if not impossible to realign when you're dealing with other binoculars that are not using that system it's much easier to uh, to take the lens out without worrying about dam or messing up the alignment now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what to look for when it comes to this stuff if you haven't seen my video on eccentric ring systems on binoculars uh, that was around developed in the 50s, 60s for uh, higher quality precision, precision, and higher quality binoculars. And uh, we're going to take a look at what to uh, what to look for now. Some of the tools that we're going to be using is going to be the uh, oil can remover tools, the uh, rubbing alcohol for lubrication, and the uh, lens vise, which is about 15 to 20 dollars. So we'll be looking at those in a bit and everything here is already loose uh, i just did it to get things done faster but what we're going to do first is we're going to remove the beauty ring and that's going to be pretty much standard for all of them or the do cap okay and right off the bat we need to start looking at certain parts of the binocular that you'll see in all of them which is this slit right here and where is it uh yeah there's going to be one right here and one right here and at this point is when you'd want to take your your lens vise and you lock it in place and then you you start turning you see how it turns okay really simple and i know you're going to be tempted to use a screwdriver don't use a screwdriver because how easily you saw me take this off is not how easy it's going to be how easily you saw me turn this thing forget about it it's not going to be that easy i told you everything is already loosened just so that i can make the video faster but right off the bat if you went, once you you locate these two slits for the locking ring you might want to start looking inside the binocular if you see a slit here this part here that you see the black is actually part of the housing the other part of the eccentric ring because that's what that's telling you that this is going to be an eccentric ring system the other part of the eccentric ring is under the locking ring and like i said i'll give you last warning if your binocular is aligned and it may be a little bit dirty maybe a little bit if you don't have to remove this don't remove it okay and that includes moving the pipe or removing the pipe you don't have that issue with the uh with the bead type binoculars because it's all one body but obviously you can remove the lenses and uh you're gonna mess you're gonna mess that up if you remove the lenses so here is the locking ring okay this is very standard typical now here comes the the whole housing okay now i told you this black was part of the housing and that there was another something else in underneath the locking ring and this is it here okay if you look close you'll see that one side is thicker and the other side is thinner and the house the lens housing same thing one side is thicker and the other side here is thinner okay you'll have to look at my video on the eccentric ring and how it works and why you don't want to mess things like this up if you don't need to get in here don't get in here when it comes to the eccentric ring system the other binoculars don't have they, they're not going to have this kind of loose ring around it one side thicker one side thinner they're not going to have that because they're not using the eccentric ring system now so this is the front how do you access access the 
the lens and remove it if you need to remove it and clean it from the back. And what's in the back? Another locking ring. Here are the two slits for it. And you see, you turn it again and again, it's not gonna be this easy, okay? It's not gonna be this easy. I just had everything already removed so that you can see how it works. Now I'm putting my grubby hands all over it. I understand that. <laughs> uh, you can use gloves if you want to, or like I always do, I'm gonna end up cleaning the heck out of it. Here's another locking ring. Now this locking ring and the first locking ring are different sizes, so there's no need to worry about which one goes where because they won't fit in each other's place. Now, since you remove the locking ring, there's the lens, okay? Now, as you can see, one side, this side has a little bit of a hump. That is called a convex. The hump or the bump is a convex. And underneath here, it's not exactly, f it sometimes are really flat, which is a plano. This would be a convex plano. Sometimes they have a little bit of a dip, like a cave, as in concave. So you'll have a convex concave lens. Okay, so the bump, the bump part, which is the con convex, is always gonna be looking out. So, okay, so that's gonna be looking out. And it's, and it's always gonna be like that for all these other binoculars. Now, this is what the housing looks like, okay? If you need to clean that up, clean that up. Now, to replace it, obviously I'm putting my grubby hands all over it. Now, we're gonna talk about the um, rubbing alcohol in a bit, because remember, you can use rubbing alcohol to clean the lenses, okay? And you wanna put, put it back, you put the, the, the bump, or the dome or the convex part, which is gonna be facing out. Okay, you wanna slide that in there. Okay, there. Then you put the correct locking ring with the slits out. Okay. Now, if you ever pick up a pair of binoculars and you hear that, most likely 99% chance it's because of this locking ring inside the binocular, inside the, either the barrel or at least, you know, for the B-type binocular, because that happens too. That happens too, they get loose inside for the B-type, okay? That means that the locking ring for the lens is loose, okay? So you're gonna put it in there, put it in there, put it in there, and you can use your, again, you can use your vise to tighten it really nice and snug now before we put this back in here and obviously you want to clean it with with the rubbing alcohol get it all nice and clean inside remember what i said before in my last video regarding uh, um, acetone and rubbing alcohol if you put something that you use alcohol or rubbing or um, uh, acetone inside the binocular and close it up those chemicals need to have a few minutes maybe 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes i don't know something like that for them to fully evaporate because if you lock them inside the binocular you could have fumes or vapors inside that are start that are going to start to uh cloudy up the lens from the inside maybe even the prisms as well it's not a lot but for those of us who understand that every tiny bit of clarity is a is is is, is a higher grade of quality and once you start to see a little bit of degradation in the in the cloudy in the in the view that's because most likely the vapors from the rubbing alcohol because we were cleaning the lens the rubbing alcohol has was not completely dry when you put it in there and it is affecting the lens so make sure that you give it a few minutes to dry out cover this up so that you don't get any dust in there let this air out and then go over it with another the proper cleaning cloth not a terry towel not your t-shirt for god's sake not your t-shirt um uh, a uh, fiber op fiber what is it the microfiber towels um uh, a fabric cloth that you can actually that you use for your sunglasses or regular glasses if you have any okay so that's what you clean this up with and now 
once you've done that you can put that in there and again I've made a video on the eccentric ring system you know you see the ridge that goes on the outside and then you can put your eccentric ring in there and let that slide in there okay and then you want to put your locking ring okay and again just gently put it in as much as you can with your fingers okay and then once you got to a certain point you again use your vice ring or vice uh, a lens vice to then get in there and really nice and snug and again then you put your do cap on or your beauty cap beauty ring and you want to be careful with this because for example this is aluminum and you don't want to end up stripping the aluminum okay so that's how you get in and out of these lenses now I'm going to show you the other lenses that are available out there now this eccentric ring system also you would see it in the uh, B type binoculars okay now this is a system, a system that I even saw in one of my 1978 77 binoculars the camera slash binocular ones but during the 70s even in the early mid late 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 60s i think is when you started seeing the bushnell ensign and the kmart focals for those of you who know a little bit more about those you can let me know but these for example are the mid 70s uh jason statesman's 165 with zoom capabilities and these are the b-type binoculars now there are some b-type binoculars that have two screws here but i have not come across those i've only seen those in a book under for a swiss or a swift binoculars and those are the only ones i've ever seen that supposedly have two screws here like uh, uh for prism adjustment the eccentric ring system the prism adjustments that i the video that i did where you have a, a screw here a, uh, a prism screw here pr oh here the prism screw is here and here here and here this is the style that i was using for uh, that particular video uh, these do not have that so um, the way to uh, collimate those binoculars is different and i'll show you in a second but because you don't have to worry about um, clean, taking the barrel or the the lens out of this one here what you have here is um, you're going to have uh, let me see you open this up obviously you take off the beauty ring again and then you have the locking ring again with the two slits this particular one has a spacer and then here comes the lens and there's a lens simple as that okay again with the with the dome side or the hump facing out facing this way and this is going to be this looks feels more like a plano like it's flat so it's a convex plano lens and uh, so that's how that one's going to be you've got uh, this uh, the Bushnell this is another Bushnell um, what is it oh no this is the Empire I'm sorry this is the Empire 256 and it also has the same thing beauty ring no spacer but it has the locking ring and then of course the lens with the dome or the con convex side out and these this one again like the Jason and like the Bushnell up here like this Bushnell okay this is the Bushnell zoom that I did a review on seven okay that's this one here this one here has a rubber piece okay so you don't have the beauty ring where you you know unscrew it but again here are the locking rings and that's all that's holding the lens inside this one's a little bit easier to work with than, than that okay so that's how there are similarities but there are differences now when it comes to these B type binoculars okay these B type binoculars if they do not have the eccentric ring system that I just showed you okay and if they do not have the the prism adjustment screws that I, that I have seen one picture of then this one the Jason's that don't have eccentric ring system and this Jason here 
have another system for collimating binoculars. And I do have to mention that because, like I said, when it comes to the eccentric ring system, you're going to screw up the alignment if you start messing with those particular binoculars. But these other ones here, you don't have to worry about that when it comes to taking out the lens and cleaning it if you want to clean inside because these particular B-type binoculars, okay, the B-type here where you don't remove any barrels or nothing, if they don't have the screws like I mentioned, I've only seen a book, a picture of one that has those. These are interesting because these here, you remove this upper part here and when you're done, you just put some rubber cement glue and put it on and then you, uh, it stays on there. But these slots here are to access the prisms inside and these B-type binoculars have a prism system where it's, it's a cluster of two of them, of both of the prisms and you, when you remove the cluster, it comes out as one piece. And so this here actually is access to screws that literally manipulate the cluster with three screws that are on springs. Okay, so it's basically, it's doing this. And so it removes, it moves the, the prism cluster. That's how that works. So I haven't run around too much with that to uh, see how that works. But uh, I played a uh, around a little bit with it, but um, I got to get the right uh, length um, screwdrivers for that. But that's how the system works. Now, uh, it bugs me that there's a lot of the too many videos out there where people say, um, oh, all binoculars have four screws to manipulate the prism. That's a complete BS. And uh, other videos where all you got to do is manipulate the, or move around the lenses and uh, you're all set. Well, that's another pile of BS because that's not true either. And they never tell you that it's virtually impossible to get them aligned. Um, so those are the things that you need to look out for. Some of these are really simple. Some of these you really got to look out for. Be careful. Now, you saw me... Uh, take that apart super easy right well it's not going to be that easy all right and this is why i have my um, oil can remover tools because what you need to do is you will need to go counterclockwise okay it's very simple you'll want to put this in here tighten it up and then you're going to turn it okay it does work okay that does work now the first thing you're going to want to do is to put rubbing alcohol with a q-tip along the edge here okay put up put enough to soak it in for a while remember the alcohol is not going to damage the lens um, and it's not going to it shouldn't go inside the housing um, so you can put some here maybe even put some in here just a little bit by a little bit little bit little bit and then try the uh, uh, the oil can remover tool and that's how i've been able to get in there and remove there's only been one binocular where i just have not been able to do that and that's one of my uh my united i did a review on the united binocular that's the only one i have not been able to get in there but otherwise the tools these three tools that you see here i've been able to get into pretty much everything that i've been wanting to mess around with screw around with and uh play with so it's been pretty easy but um hopefully my videos here are giving you a heads up on what it is that you need to look out for and how it is to do it because as you saw me take it apart put it back together super simple but getting in there is actually a little bit of a pain in the rear it can be and of course again if you've got eccentric ring systems ooh, really think twice about it really think twice if you can do with a little bit of dust in the, in the image um, I'd say let it slide um, if you got some of these here and uh, some of the other binoculars here um, you don't really have to worry about um, um, damage or messing up the alignment by removing the front, the objective lenses. Okay, so hopefully my video helped you out. Hopefully you found it easy. And if you have any more questions, uh, let me know. Hopefully I can help. Thanks.